Tonight is one of those nights in Daily Fantasy Baseball where you are going to want to curse at the salary cap up and down because there are so many fun pitchers on this slate. Most of them are going to carry pretty high salaries. The top stacks I like also carry high salary bats. So it's going to suck in that regard. We're going to try to run through some ways to save some salary without totally ignoring those awesome plays. We're going to try to identify how to... I handle pitching and get you ready for a 12 game slate in major league baseball. So let's dive on in ready, dive in on in right now and try to find a way to squeeze all of our favorite plays underneath that dreaded, dreadful salary cap. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Numberfire here to break down Wednesday's 12 game main slate with lock set for 7.05 PM Eastern for today. Couple weather notes here. The first one in New York for the Mets and the Yankees winds are out to center at 11 miles per hour. I would downgrade pitchers there a bit. It is Garrett Cole taking on Justin Verlander in that one in Boston for the Red Sox and Rockies. There is a good chance of rain, but doesn't look like a washout as of right now. I'd check back on that later on just to be sure, but I think they should be able to good. To, they should be good to go, but not entirely convinced of that for sure. Some thunderstorms will be around Kansas City for the Royals and the Reds. I check back on the timing of that later on as well as it would impact a pitcher I like for tonight. So uh, Boston and Kansas City, the two spots where we could see some weather in play for tonight. We'll talk about top pitching options and much more here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Our preview of the U.S. Open is up over on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed via myself and Brandon Gadula breaking down our top plays for the third major of the year. We also had that show up over on the FanDuel YouTube page. So check out the FanDuel YouTube page. Leave us a thumbs up there or go to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed. Leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or a five star rating on Spotify as well. Speaking of PGA DFS, are you looking to have a stake in the U.S. Open all weekend? Well, with FanDuel, got you covered via the PGA Eagle Contest, which is now live. Test your knowledge of the PGA Tour by putting together a six-person lineup while staying under the salary cap and using FanDuel's live scoring feature. Follow along as you compete for your share of $350,000 with first place taking home $100K, all for just a $9 entry fee, whether it's household names like Scotty Scheffler and Brooks Kepka or lesser-known golfers of your choice, the Dark Horse do you like they're going to tee off on Thursday. Plenty of options to fill out a lineup as you compete for first place. Thursday will be here before you know it. So submit your lineups on FanDuel today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate from Raval Beds comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $11,300, followed by Clayton Kershaw at 11-1. Luis Castillo, revenge game tonight, 10-8. Garrett Cole comes in at $10,600. Merrill Kelly's at 10-4. Tyler Glass now at 10-1, followed by Michael Walker at 99. Jose Barrios' salary is 95 with Aira Perez at 92. Andrew Heaney is 9,000 with Justin Verlander, Aaron Savalli, and Josiah Gray, all as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, for today, a lot of good pitchers. And I do think there are multiple ways you could play this as far as uh, who you want to rank at the top of your list for tonight. When I look at this slate and try to identify where I want to go personally, I do wind up favoring Luis Castillo. Castillo, I think, is a guy who has the best blend of matchup, talent, not the worst salary in the world either, uh, with his salary sitting down there at... Um, at uh, $10,800. I think that's a pretty fair number. So I'm going to go Luis Castillo one. It's not because he's facing his old organization, the Miami Marlins, but it does not hurt. Castillo again is facing Miami, just a 21% strikeout rate against righties, which is lower than average. So not ideal in terms of a, a strikeout matchup, but everything else lines up really well for Castillo. The Marlins have a 90 WRC plus against righties. They have a 132 ISO and a 33% fly ball rate. That reduced fly ball rate is a good thing for Castillo because that is one area where he has struggled. We have a seven start sample on Castillo since his velocity stabilized this year, and he has a 46% hard hit rate allowed in that time with a 43% fly ball rate. But his ERA is still good in that time at 3.45. 
the reason he's been able to overcome the bad at ball data is because everything else is so freaking good. He has a 3.23 skill interactive ERA, 30% strikeout rate, and even in a middling matchup, I have Castillo projected for 7.1 strikeouts. That number is not the highest number on the slate. That belongs to the guy we'll discuss here in a second, but it is pretty high. And then you add in the fact that he's probably not going to let up a ton of earned runs in this matchup, you wouldn't think. I think that all ends up to make uh, Castillo a quality play. So Luis Castillo, to me, $10,800 will be the top pitcher on the main slate for tonight. As for the second option, I'm going to go Clayton Kershaw. As mentioned, Kershaw is a guy who does lead my strikeout projections for tonight. Kershaw's salary is 11-1. That is pretty high. So again, we're going to have to be flexible, working away our way around salaries for tonight. But Kershaw, I think, is worth it. He's facing the White Sox, and... That offense is not as scary as they once were against lefties. They have a 103 WRC plus against lefties this year with a 25% strikeout rate. And they also have a low walk rate. And that helps keep the pitch count in check for the opposing pitcher. Kershaw is excelling in the plate discipline numbers this year, too, because across the full season, he has a 30% strikeout rate with a 6% walk rate. That strikeout rate ranks second on the main slate for tonight. The skill interactive ERA for Kershaw at 3.15, that ranks first. And the bad at ball data has been awesome as well. And that's why when you combine the strikeouts, the low walk rate with the bad at ball data, you get a 2.95 ERA. There aren't really any holes in Kershaw's games right now. He's hit nine strikeouts in two consecutive games. He's done it five total times so far this year. So he hasn't had double digit strikeouts yet, but that's very much in his range of outcomes. 11-1 is not nothing. It's definitely a lot, but I think that Kershaw is worth it. I'd put him behind only Castillo for tonight. I think I like Castillo more straight up. Uh, so the reduced salary is not the uh, the $300 you're saving. is not a huge factor for me, but it doesn't hurt. So we'll go Castillo one, Clayton Kershaw two, as far as the top pitchers for tonight. The top value is going to be a guy who... Has shocked me so far and also is in a potential rain game. So make sure you check back, back the weather on Kansas City. But I kind of like Ben Lively. I was not expecting uh, much when Lively moved into the rotation for Lively. I think we could have stacked against him. I may have actually in his first couple starts, but I do think he's in play. Lively started this year in AAA and he had good results there. But his strikeout rate was just 15%. And this is after Lively had spent the previous two years in the KBO. In the KBO, Lively was fine, but he wasn't anything super special. So seeing Lively come back to Major League Baseball and shift into the rotation, I think it was pretty fair to be skeptical of him. But he's been really good so far. We're up to five starts on Lively as a starter. He has a 3.69 skill interactive ERA. Strikeout rate is 27%. He has eight strikeouts in three games. And those games came against the Yankees once and the Cardinals twice. Good offenses, but he was able to rack up strikeouts against them. Overall, the strikeout uh, rate, again, 27%. I think that will come down because his swing and strike rate is just 10.6%. So that may not stick. But he's looked really good so far, and he faces the Royals tonight. They have a 26% strikeout rate against righties on the current active roster. So eventually the strikeouts will come down, but it may not happen here in this matchup specifically. The salary for Lively is $7,800, and that helps alleviate a lot of the concerns here too. So there are still reasons to be wary of Lively, but I don't think there are enough to avoid him at that salary and in this matchup. So Ben Lively, $7,800, the top value for today. I prefer to spend up, but you know, if we get the all clear on the weather, if I can't quite get in the stacks I want, I'm not opposed to dipping down to Lively and making my life a lot easier in that regard. Let's discuss why the stacks are a key part of that, because a lot of the stacks I want are high salaried. I think the big exception is Boston. The Red Sox do come with guys with low salaries. The weather, again, could be a bit dicey, so make sure you go back to um, the weather forecast for Boston for today, make sure they are good to go. But assuming they are, I think they could be a good source of value for tonight uh, on this slate. The Red Sox going up against Austin Gomber, and a lot of his results are due to pitching at Coors Field. His ERA is 7.57, and it would not be that high if he pitched elsewhere. But even the peripherals that account for Park are pretty sour on Gomber, which is why we can be here even while he goes on the road for tonight. 
The skill interactive ERA for Gomber is 5.49, and skill interactive ERA tends to undersell how bad hard contact can be. And Gomber there is at 44%. So if I were to take an over-under on his ERA relative to his skill interactive ERA, I'd expect his ERA to be worse than his skill interactive ERA due to the hard contact. So, sure, Gomber has been unlucky because he's at Coors Field, but he's also letting up hard contact and he's not getting strikeouts. And those are things we can stack against regardless of where the game is being played. So again, check the weather here. And if we get the green lights, I would say the Red Sox are the top stack, not just because they have guys with value salaries, but it definitely does not hurt uh, to have guys like that available to us within the stack for tonight. One of those value plays actually is Adam Duvall, who uh, came off the IL pretty recently and he hasn't done much since returning did have a double last night but not a ton of hard contact and that could be a concern because he's you know still working his way back but he did hit for power in his rehab stint and that rehab stint was 29 plate appearances so it's not like duvall was fully rushed back i know we've not seen it yet so far in the majors but i still think it's in there so I'm going to want to buy back into Duvall beginning tonight. He does have a stolen base too, since he came back. So that helps. Um, so Adam Duvall, $2,900, I think will be a core play for me tonight. There are other guys in this team who can save us some salary. Maybe not the highest upside guys in general, but uh, they are guys we can at least give some consideration to for tonight because salary will be a key focal point uh, once again. Park factor is obviously not great again for the Tampa Bay Rays. They are still out in Oakland. Um, but everything else beyond the park factor lines up really well, and I'm going to be high on them tonight. They're facing Luis Medina, who will be pitching as either the starter or the bulk reliever for the A's. He's listed as starter right now, but they do kind of shift that around. Medina did have a nice outing last week. He went five innings, let up two runs with six strikeouts, and that came against the Brewers. They're not a great offense, but they're also not like hideous, so it, it's, it definitely is a, a good thing. But the problem is that... It's it's deviating from what we've seen so far from Medina. That was the first outing Medina has had this year, allowing three or or fewer than three earned runs. He's let up three plus or five plus earned runs in three out of seven starts. Overall, Medina's uh, expected ERA at six point oh six. He has a forty three percent hard hit rate allowed, and now he's to face the Rays. They have a one twenty six WRC plus against righties with a two hundred ISO. It is a bad park, but. The Rays offense also plays its home games in a pretty bad park. So I do wish we had a good park factor here because I would put the Rays above the Red Sox if that were the case. But even without that, the Rays are going to be my top stack of the night. I think within those Rays stacks, Isak Paredes might be a bit underrated. His salary for this team is pretty low at $3,300. But against righties specifically, he has a 232 ISO. And... I tended to view Paredes as being more of a lefty only guy in the past, but hits in the middle of the order, hits her power. He doesn't steal bases, which may be why he's not a, as big of a priority within the stack, but I do like Paredes against righties too. So I think we should be more, more willing to include Paredes in our stacks against righties when going towards the race, which I will be doing for tonight. Third stack is going to be the Rangers. And I kind of feel bad for you, Detmers, because I like him as a pitcher, but he keeps on drawing really rough matchups, and he has overcome some of them. So he's a good pitcher. That can happen for sure. But the Rangers are really tough. So I do want to give them a look here against Detmers for tonight. Detmers faced the Cubs last week. They are a high strikeout offense, but they also do it lefties well. And Detmers was fantastic in that game. The start before that, he had the Astros. And just in general, we've seen Detmers face a lot of really solid teams. But... None of those teams had a WRC plus higher against lefties than what the Rangers have. That's at 137, which ranks third in all of baseball. Detmers is primarily struggling with hard contact. He's let up a 43% hard hit rate this year, so he can get strikeouts. But when he doesn't get that third strike, things can go pretty poorly. And the Rangers are a low strikeout team as well against lefties. So different than it was last week with the Cubs, where you could see the path to Detmer striking out a bunch of guys and the stack failing for this one, because the Rangers hit the ball well and don't strike out a whole lot. I think it's a tougher matchup for Detmers. The Rangers face Detmers uh, back on May 6th. They chased him after four innings there, scored three runs in that one with a 50% hard hit rate. So 
I think they'll do well in the rematch too. So the Rangers to me, the third stack behind the Red Sox and uh, the Rays for tonight. Again, loan downside here is salary. They're all super high for a reason. The Rangers offense has been awesome. So you understand why their salaries are high, but it means we're going to have to dip in the order to, to be able to afford this stack. I do think guys with salaries of $3,400 or lower, all fun in Josh Young, Mitch Garver, Ezekiel Duran, uh, as we discussed on Monday. And I'm open to a bottom of the order stack where I just load up on those guys and hope that Duran comes up with uh, Garver, Young on, on base and stuff like that. We can get the double dip via the RBIs and run scored. So bottom of the order stack, I think is pretty in play for the Rangers if it allows you to actually get to this team, which I would like to do for tonight. So to me, top stacks of the day, Red Sox one, Rays two, Rangers three. Things to watch for tonight. I am slowly gaining interest in Tyler Glass now, but not quite there yet. He has not hit 90 pitches yet, which he might not need to, honestly, but that could change tonight. But it just doesn't give a lot of wiggle room for him to have one bad plate appearance and still pay off for DFS. It is a fantastic matchup with the A's. So I'm not totally out on him. Uh, he's still pretty high in my strikeout projections. He's above seven for me right now, but I want to see a tad more before I rank him above guys like Castillo and Kershaw. So not quite on glass now tonight as of yet. Osvaldo Bito is making his debut for the Pirates tonight facing the Cubs. Not sure how to feel about this one because Beto did a good job of limiting hard contact in AAA, but the plate discipline numbers were not great. I'd lean towards stacking the Cubs here, but the temperature being just 64 degrees at Wrigley gives you an excuse if you'd rather not stack the Cubs. So could go either way on that one. The Orioles are facing um, Jose Barrios and Barrios has been a lot better recently, suppressing hard contact, but they're also lower salaried given the guys that they got healthy right now. Barrios has struggled historically against lefties, tends to have pretty extreme home road splits. So on the road, facing a very lefty heavy lineup right now, I think the Orioles could be a good stack for tonight. So Orioles, to me, one of the under the radar stacks, potentially, I assume they will be that uh, could turn towards them. Would rank them below the other ones, but for a single entry type lineup where you're trying to be different without being dumb, I think the Orioles could be a quality option there. Let's finish up here with the dinger calls for today. The boring one, Adam Duvall. He is back. I'm hoping he can be fully, fully back for tonight. Facing a lefty in Boston. Hopefully the weather can be good to us here, but we'll go Adam Duvall as the boring home run call. For the fun one, uh, we got a dinger out of him on Monday when I was on him there. And let's go back to him. It was not a dinger call, but he did Homer after discussing him on the show. So Ezekiel Duran has been, I think, crazy underrated for the Rangers so far this year. He's been... He, before and after his injury, hitting the ball really hard, can steals and bases, not striking out a whole lot. So we'll put him in the dinger calls and kind of see what happens. So the home run calls for today, Adam Duvall and Ezekiel Duran. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. We are back with you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. As mentioned, don't forget to check out our U.S. Open PGA DFS preview via myself and Brandon Gadula over on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineup for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.